Hey everybody, Sean here, and welcome to Revealing Truth. As the headline reads, the Pope suggests blessings for same-sex unions may be possible. And you can find many articles online about this. It's a reminder that, you know, Jesus is someone who is for the people in the margins. As a gay man and practicing Catholic, Mark Guevara sometimes has had crises of faith, but he's encouraged by comments from Pope Francis on same-sex unions. Having the blessing of the church means that the church walks with people like myself who are in uh, relationships. He's referring to Francis's response to conservative cardinals, that some same-sex unions could be open to a blessing if there was pastoral prudence and that they not necessarily become a norm, meaning they could be done on a case-by-case -case basis, says this Vatican expert. Change happens really quite slowly at the Vatican, so this is, a, this is an important statement and it's a deeply significant statement, but it's going to take a long time to figure out what the ramifications of it are. Underscoring that complexity, Francis reiterated church doctrine that same-sex relationships are objectively sinful. But he also said the church must do more than just deny, reject and exclude. A welcome message for many. There has been many instances of violence against gay people and the LGBTQ people community have been under attack. And, and a statement like this from the Pope I think does tremendous good in hopefully calming down these feelings. Others want him to go further. Right now, same-sex couples cannot receive the sacrament of marriage. Right now, gay men are told that they can't enter the priesthood. Many issues of equality will soon be discussed by the church. A major, nearly month-long meeting to outline the Catholic Church's future is set to begin at the Vatican on Wednesday. Julia Wong, CBC News, Edmonton. This is, unfortunately, where we are. Not only with the Catholic Church, but even within Christianity. Let's be clear, there is no blessing something God has called sin. There is no changing God's rules, so to speak. And there's no such thing as a gay Christian. Maybe for Catholics there is because they have a false religion, but not with Christianity. This applies to anything God calls sin. You can't say that I'm a Christian murderer, I'm a Christian thief, or whatever. You cannot say that you are a born-again Christian and embrace any sin as being okay because that's saying that God is wrong on that topic. Now, it's another story if you are born again and have fallen back into sin. But you don't embrace it as being okay. You despise it. You're in tears at times over your sin and in shock how you could do such a thing. So for the Pope or any Christian church to start making exceptions for sin is the only sign you need to know that it's time to find a new church. So if you are calling yourself a Christian and saying that a certain sin is okay, you need to do what 2 Corinthians 13.5 says and examine yourself to see if you really are in the faith. It says to test ourselves because if we are saved, that means Jesus Christ is in us unless we fail the test, meaning that the Holy Spirit isn't actually in us. But this is a good test for yourself. Do I justify any particular sin as being all right? That might be a sign that you aren't really saved. Allow me to finish by asking you one very important question. If you died today, do you think you'd go to heaven? Fact is, we've all broken God's Ten Commandments and breaking God's law is called sin. 1 John 3, 4 tells us that sin is transgression of the law. Let's go through a few of those commandments. Ever told a lie? It only takes one to make someone a liar. Ever taken something that wasn't yours, even if it's small? That makes you a thief. Ever said, oh my God, or Jesus Christ in a moment of anger? That's called taking the Lord's name in vain. How about having a dirty thought? God is so perfect and holy that even thinking lustful things is considered adultery of the heart to him. And that's only four of the Ten Commandments. The penalty for sin is death, and God's prison, so to speak, is hell, and it's forever. And just like in a court of law, a good judge cannot overlook someone's crime, God will not overlook ours. But also like in a court of law, if the fine is paid, the judge can legally let you go, even though you're guilty. 
If we died today and stood before God, we'd all be guilty of breaking his laws. That's where Jesus comes in. He lived a sinless life and took the death penalty on our behalf. So just like someone paying your fine in court, Jesus paid our fine to God with his life. John 3.16 says that God loved us so much that he gave his one and only son and that whoever believes in him, that is, commits to Jesus, will not get what they deserve, but shall have everlasting life. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9 tells us that we are saved by grace through faith in Christ and not of works. There's nothing we can do to earn God's forgiveness. It's his gift to us. So if you aren't sure that you'd go to heaven today, then admit to God that you're sorry for breaking his laws. Admit that you deserve punishment for this and confess that you believe Jesus Christ has paid your fine on the cross. There's no special words, just be honest with God. He knows everything anyways. If you're sincere about that, then scripture says that you will become a new creation. The old you will be gone and the new will come. You will be born again, and with God's Spirit now living inside you, you're going to notice some definite changes in your life. Don't wait another minute, because no one is guaranteed they'll see tomorrow. We're going to leave it here for today, but as always, feel free to leave your thoughts and comments below, and until next time, take care and God bless.